Okay, so today we'll be going over chapter six, reproduction at the cellular level. So <clears throat> to introduce the topic that we call the fertilized egg, note I'm using a uh, pen today instead of uh, just regular highlighter, just changing up a bit. The fertilized egg is called the zygote and it begins all sexually reproducing organisms, including humans. And the trillions of controlled cell division is required to produce a complex multicellular human. Fully grown organism still need cell division to regenerate, regenerate the tissues, like liver tissues, the lining of your gut, and so on and so forth. And the single cell organisms use cell division as their method of reproduction. This is how they reproduce, make more of themselves. And the sea urchin eggs go through divisions and developmental stages to reach the adulthood, shown here. This is a sea urchin. This is where, this is the uh, source of uni sushi. The uni is the gonad of sea urchin. And here's a sea urchin dividing once, developing into a gastroplasin. So how does um, how does cell cycle work? Cell cycle produces two daughter cells from one parent cell, and the mechanisms for cell division is um, or are rather uh, similar in protists, plants, and animal cells. They all have to divide the cell content as well as the genome. So what is the genome? Genome is the entirety of cells DNA. And for prokary prokaryotes, uh, it usually just contain it. They, no, they definitely they all just contain one loop of DNA in a nucleoid region. This is that's this region here, the circular coiled brown strands are showing the DNA. In eukaryotes, it has a lot more organization level, and uh, it contains several linear molecules, DNAs, and they're organized into chromosomes. And what do we call nucleo, nucleolus, nu yeah, nucleolus. Nucleolus is the place inside the nucleus here that produces the ribosomal RNA. And that's where the ribosomes reside. In humans, uh, gametes have uh, 23 chromosomes, haploid is one end, and in somatic cells, we have 46 cell, uh, chromosomes or 23 pairs, one from each parent. And that's two in or diploid. Um, here is a diagram or picture of karyotypes, all the chromosomes viewed inside the nucleus, the next to the karyotypes here, condensed chromosomes. Uh, chromosomes can be separated out from the nucleus during mitosis experimentally. And what makes this possible? How do you, how, what stops the mitosis? Mitosis can be stopped at the metaplate by using compounds like colchicin, which inhibits tubulin depolymerization. And how do you rupture the nucleus? You would use hypotonic conditions. So on the right, you have separated chromosomes here and here. Well, this is more more of an arranged in order in, in according to biggest to the smallest. That's how the chromosomes are numbered. So, so what stage? Uh, metaphase. Uh, when do the chromosomes condense? They start condensing at prophase, and so on. On the left is the arranged. This thing here is the arranged by the numbers, sizes of chromosomes. And 23 homologue chromosomes, one from each parent, uh, are shown here. In this case, this is a female uh, chromosome because she, uh, it only shows two Xs instead of X and Y. Differences in X and Y, X has about, X chromosome has about 900 genes, whereas Y chromosome has about 30 or 55 genes. So X is about nine, three times longer though, yet contains far more genes. So homolog chromosomes or homologs 
are matched in pair in a dipole set, which as shown here. Note each homologues have 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 the same length and the same gene in the same location. This is why we call that locus. And if you think about that, that's pretty remarkable. Because I mean, it could be anywhere. One came from uh, mother, the other came from father. Yet they all contain the same genes in the same location. Genes and functional units, or functional units of, on the chromosome, code for specific gene products. And gene products can be proteins or RNAs. There are some functional RNAs, like small interfering RNAs, ribosomal RNAs, and so, so on and so forth. They're still considered the gene product. Gene products de uh, determine your trade, hair color, blood type, earlobes, etc. Um, each homologue originates from a different parent. Same genes on this homologue located in the same place may not be identical. That's where the variability comes from. So the variation of the trait of individual uh, amongst the individuals is caused by that different combination of genes from parents. So blood type uh, genes is an example. You can have uh, AA, BB, and OO. You can inherit A from dad, B from mom, and become AB blood type. Or you could in inherit O from dad, B from mom, and become B. Um, minor variations in traits, such as those for blood types and eye color and heights, these are uh, Contrib these contribute to the natural variation found within the species and that causes changes in populations. And X and Y are the exception to this rule of homologue probes and chromosomes. X and Y are regardless for males, X and Y are the homologs. For female, X and X are homologs, but X and Y, because X and Y contain different number of genes, the genes found in X and Y obviously are obviously are not uh, the same. More on, the, more on this in the later chapters. Uh, so how does the human genome compare to other organisms? Human, contain, human genome contains 46 chromosomes. Fruit fly has four chromosomes. Rice plant has 12. Your pet dog has 39. And cat has 38. And number of the chromosome is not necessarily equal to the complexity of the organism. What about number of genes? Humans have about 20,000 to 25,000 genes. Water flea has 31,000 genes. And what about um, human genome size? Human genome has 3 billion, 3 to the 10 to the 9th, or 3 billion base pairs. Paris japonica has 150 billion pairs. That is the largest uh, genome that's been sequenced so far. So what makes an organism uh, more complex? Uh, specialized organization is required for complexity. And all these organisms have such complexities. So what makes them more complex? That's a question to be answered by scientists for generations to come. Okay, cell cycle. So what is cell cycle? Cell cycle includes cell growth stage, growth one stage, and cell division or mitosis stage. And that produces two daughter cells. And cell division itself is highly regulated. It requires uh, growth, sta various uh, stages of growth, DNA replication, and the division cell that produces two identical cells. And there are two major phases. One is the interphase that includes G1, DNA synthesis, and G2, growth two phase. And then you have the mitotic phase, which includes mitosis. And the mitosis doesn't include the cytokinesis, which is the division of the cell itself. So interface, let's just go over a brief description of each phases. Growth one phase, AKA the first gap phase, 
And this is when the accumulation of building blocks occur, nucleotides, proteins, ATP. And it, this has to occur before the replication of the DNA. And a cell is still diploid to N. Then you have the synthesis phase. This is when the DNA replication occurs. And the identical sister chromatids are attached to each other at the centromere or the center of the uh, chromosome, a duplicated chromosome. And, and at this point, the cell is 4N or tetraploid. And the centrosome, made up of two centrioles, are duplicated and in animal cells, but not in plant or fungi. Centrosomes are not present in plant or fungi. Then the cell goes through the second growth phase. This is where it repl replenishes the DNA, makes additional proteins that's needed for the uh, chromosome movement or the separation of the chromosomes. And then cytoskeleton is dismantled to make the myto mitotic spindles. And this is what separates the chromosome and the chromatids. And at this point, it's still foreign. Then it enters the mitotic phase. Mitotic phase includes mitosis and cytokinesis. It makes two daughter cells. Mitosis occurs in five main phases, where duplicated chromosomes are aligned at the meta plate and then separated by the tubulin uh, microtubules. And then they're moved towards the opposite ends, where the centrosomes reside in animal cells. And then cytokinesis occurs. This is with the physical separation of the cytoplasmic component into two daughter cells. Uh, here's the uh, mitosis in a little more uh, diagrammatical and the photographic uh, details. Five phases are shown, prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, are these phases. Goal is to divide the nucleus and the genome. That's the entire uh, point of mitosis. So what happens in prophase? In prophase, chromosomes condense, spindle fibers are forming and from the uh, centrosomes, and centrosomes start, move, start moving to the opposite poles. They're separating. And the nuclear env envelope starts to break down. And during the prometaphase, kinetochore appears on the uh, centrosome, so centromeres, I'm sorry. And then mitotic spindle, made up of microtubules, attached to the, to the kinetochores. And that's what's happening here. And the next stage, uh, during the metaphase, Chromosomes line up at the meta plate. This is the meta plate in the center. And the, each sister chromatid is now attached to the spindle fibers at the uh, centrosomes. And anaphase is where the centromeres split in two. And the sister chromatids move to opposite directions or towards the opposite poles. And certain spindle fibers lengthen and elongate the cells because you need that space in order to divide. Then the telophase, all events from first three phases have to reverse. Chrom chromosomes arrive at the opposite poles and begin to decondense. Mitotic spindle breaks down to reform the cytoskeletons and the nuclear envelope reforms. Pause for a second here. <clears throat> 